Hello, human beings. A while back, I was asked to make a video on self-judgment while singing. So when you're singing and you're really, really getting down on yourself and judging what you're doing. So uh, obviously, time-wise, I thought about it a lot. Self-judgment is really, really important because you need to be able to judge yourself. You need to be able to look at what you're doing, whether it's an exercise, a recording, a live performance, and you need to be able to look at it and say, okay, that needs to improve. That's, that's fine. I won't touch that. And oh my goodness, I should never do that again. So it is a very useful skill. I'm going to start with my general approach and how I try to navigate this topic within myself and with my students. So the first thing that I start with is when you're warming up, when you're warming up and you're doing exercises or you're singing a song, if you make a mistake, don't fix it. Carry on. Finish the exercise, finish the song, move on. You can revisit that mistake later. You can either revisit it when the song has finished, when the exercise has finished, or sometime later in that practice session, or, you know, later on in the week, next month, whatever. You can revisit it, but don't fix things in the moment. Don't have your self-judgment dictate your actions and what you do. Your self-judgment is more like an observation. You notice it, you make a note of it, and you are aware of it. It's all about awareness. The other thing, of course, is that mistakes will happen, and we need to get used to mistakes, we need to get comfortable with mistakes, and we need to realize that mistakes do not always need to be corrected. And they don't need to be corrected in the moment. And very often when you revisit a mistake, it's already fixed. So it wasn't, it wasn't a technical problem. It didn't need fixing. It just was a small mistake that happened in that moment. And you shouldn't be wasting your time on it. So that's the first thing. Two things that I like to do is uh, I like to designate uh, one vocal exercise that isn't supposed to sound a certain way. Usually what I do is this is the first exercise that I will do during the day. So if I roll out of bed and my first exercise is eh, I have no goals, no targets, no desired sound. I am literally just checking in with my body and I'm like, okay, well, how does it feel? How does it feel? What is my body randomly doing today? What is my brain doing today? Is my body going, eh? Is it going, eh? Is it going, eh? Like, what's happening today? I'm just checking in. I'm just accepting things the way that they are. Again, for me, this is about practicing acceptance. Because there was no goal and there was no target, the only thing I'm supposed to do psychologically during that exercise is accept what happens. Easier said than done for some. The second thing I like to do is pick an exercise that is meant to sound ugly. It's supposed to be terrible. And you can either do this with your greatest weakness. So for me, one of my biggest weaknesses is my chest voice around a G4. I, I just, I tense around a G4. It happens. It's getting much better. 
So I will purposefully try to sound really ugly and terrible around that G4, because it's a difficult area. But I also do this in reverse. So that's on my weakness. But one of my greatest strengths is pitching. I'm, I, I'm good at pitching. You could play me any random irrelevant series of pitches that don't even relate to a key and I will usually be able to just sing it back at you. Now that sounds like a great thing, but it can also be a problem because how we pitch and whether we're a little bit flat or whether we're a little bit sharp communicates emotion <laughs> and it communicates humanity and it relates to stylistic traits. So like if I want to sing rock music, Ooh, I do not want to be on pitch in the same way that I want to be on pitch if I'm singing power metal. And so what I will do is I will purposefully try to get the pitch wrong. <laughs> it's very difficult uh, for me. And this is partially because in my mind it just it sounds bad. I suffer aesthetically. So you can do that. You can challenge your preconceived notions of what is good by purposefully doing something bad and succeeding at it. Then we will need to put in a little bit of work in order to reframe our ideas and our thoughts. <laughs> and as a result, our idea of our own voice. Is there value in sounding good? Why do we want to sound good? What are our aesthetics? Because remember, you know, like when I listen to black metal, I think it sounds great. But if I play black metal to Bob down the street, Bob is going to think it sounds terrible. There are certain sounds that people absolutely love. I mean, like metalcore singing. I don't like it aesthetically. It doesn't sound good to me. But it sounds really good to a lot of people. So just bear in mind that when you sound bad, you might not sound bad to someone else. Or if someone has told you that you sound bad, you might sound good to someone else. And you really want to be asking yourself at all times, what are my aesthetics? What things do I like? What do I not like? That person who said that I sound like shit, what style of music do they like? What do they not like? That other person once who said, you sound fine, what style of music do they like? Like, what is going on? Through what lens are we judging at any given moment? Or through what lens are we being judged? You could go deeper. You could go into, like, what is the meaning of creating art? Is it to show people how good you are? I think most people would say no. What is the meaning of expressing emotion? And is does emotion sound good? How do you express yourself? And do you only want to limit yourself to the aspects of yourself that are quote-unquote good? Why would you not be able to express parts of yourself that are bad or lesser? or not acceptable socially within the constraints of art. You can go really deep with this, and there's value in trying to do that work. A very practical thing in relation to psychology is to take moments to pause. Whether you're singing, doing exercises, whatever it is, just stop and notice how you feel about how you sound. From there, 
the way that you could move forward is by exploring different feelings that you could have about that sound you made. So don't change the sound, change how you feel about the sound and then recreate the sound and see if you can experience a different emotion whilst making that sound. That can be quite interesting. You could also try to change your mood and how you feel and your intention and see if that changes the sound that comes out of you. For some people it does, for, for other people it doesn't. It's fine, you're just exploring. Again, curiosity, curiosity and interest towards yourself, towards your voice. You're just curious. It's more like being fascinated by yourself and your body. And even if you fail within quotation marks or you sound terrible, just be fascinated by that. Be interested in, wow, I really sound shit. That's interesting. Just that type of mentality and that kind of vibe. If the feelings you experience are very, very, very overwhelming, do consider journaling and writing about it to yourself. You might uncover some things. And if it is really bad, of course, consider finding a licensed therapist or even a licensed music therapist and working through some things with them. Three options that you can play around with in order to, uh, over time, start shifting the way that you judge yourself. One thing that you can do is you can sing a song or an exercise or a phrase, whatever it is you're working on, and you can sing it as yourself. You can sing it as yourself in different periods of your life. So how would you sing it when you were five? How would you sing it when you were 13? How would you sing it when you were 18? How would you sing it when you're 25, 35, 45, whatever? You, through different moods, how would you sing it if you were angry? How would you sing it if you were happy? How would you sing it if you felt confident? How would you sing it if you felt intimidated? That kind of stuff. But also, how would you sing it if you were someone else? How would you sing it if you were Bruce Dickinson? How would you sing this if you were Will Ramos? How would you sing it if you were Michael Kiske? Just, how would you sing it if you were Tarja Turunen? Like, pick people that you find interesting or curious and pretend to be them for a minute and see, does it change the sound that comes out of you? You might discover things by doing that. Then the second option is record yourself. Now, if you judge yourself very, very harshly, you need to start that process by recording yourself and not listening to the recording. You just record yourself for like two weeks until you don't think anything about recording yourself and you're a little bit numb to recording yourself. And then when you are ready to start listening to your recordings, Pick a small section, you know, pick like 15 seconds. Do not listen to one hour of yourself. It's too overwhelming. And decide in advance what you'll listen to. I go into detail in this in my how to practice video, so you know, check that one out. But so decide, you're just going to focus, let's say, on pitching, or you're just going to focus on how your vowels sound, how your consonants sound, how the beginning of the phrase sounds only. You're just going to pick one thing to focus on, and you're going to break it down to make it a little bit more systematic and less overwhelming emotionally when you listen to yourself. And then the third thing is consider writing down after the song or the exercise or whatever, consider writing down one thing that went well, one thing that improved, and one thing you would like to improve. All we're doing is reframing the way that you think about things. And be very specific. 
if you have to fix a house, this is very overwhelming. There are so many things. It's impossible for your brain to contain how much work it is to fix a house. But if you know that you need to fix the loose door handle, that's a manageable task. You're like, okay, I can, I can do that. I can try doing that. And if you notice that fixing the door handle is very emotionally overwhelming for you, you can focus on a different task. Or you can try and break that down into even smaller tasks until you're not emotionally overwhelmed by what is in front of you. Let me know if any of you struggle with judging yourself, if any of the things I suggested sound like they could work or like they might resonate with you or be helpful in any way. And if you feel like none of the things that I said would be helpful for you, write me a comment and let me know what it is you're struggling with exactly like give me more details and i'll see if i can think of anything that is all for now if you would like to join me and support me and help me out do take a look at my patreon and see what kind of options i have there i'm hoping to talk about these kind of things and these topics a lot more on my patreon so if you're able to consider joining me there and that is all for now. I will see you when I see you next. Bye.